One. This is Liam from One Direction, and we're in control of Radio One for the next hour. It's our hour, and we're picking the music. Get involved using the hashtag One D R One Xmas. This is the One D Christmas Show. Merry Christmas, BBC Radio One. I need to talk to you, Liam. You need to talk to me. This sounds important. I better, better sit back. It's Christmas Day. It's Christmas Day. Now, what is the song that Christmas kind of wouldn't be without? Well, I suppose White Christmas is always the one that kind of gets me. Which version do you like? Is it, does it have to be the classic? The classic? Yeah. So I used to, before I was in the band, I used to go and do um, swing gigs, and that would be one of the ones around Christmas time when I was all on my own. I used to get paid £90 to sing in a pub down the road, which was fun. Have you got the baritone going on for White Christmas? I did. I used to have. Now I've got um, a fairly high falsetto <laughs> thing going on, so we've kind of switched. It's a different it's like, interpretation. When you grow up, usually your voice goes down. <laughs> I grew up and then my voice went up, which is funny. So The uh, Benjamin Button of voices Yeah, going exactly. On the there. Benjamin Button of voices. <laughs> I love that. I want to talk about Christmas Day and how it is for you, because people have very, very specific um, kind of schedules for Christmas Day. I know that um, there will be no food until you've opened all your presents in my house, but w what's the order of events? You see, when I was younger, we used to have like a really different Christmas. We used to go out for a curry, which that's just very abstract, isn't it? I think, you know... It That's was, out there. It was out there. But I, we, I got a new house and we kind of cooked in my house for the first time and Jamie Oliver sent us over a turkey. How boss is that? That is this such was a last clang. Christmas. Yeah, literally, he sent me over a big, big turkey. I've got, got to love old Jamo. Um, <laughs> and it was good. My dad, my dad's a good cook and I'm like, all right. So I kind of just let my dad do it and just kind of watched and then kind of took credit for it afterwards. Brilliant. But my sister made something. I can't remember what she made. And she didn't really do anything. She made the gravy. And it was like, oh, the gravy's really nice. And I'm sat there having cooked this whole dinner thinking... <laughs> The gravy's nice. The juice. The gravy is nice. What kind of... I don't even want to talk about that, but it was. Thanks, Jamie, for the turkey. Gravy, to be fair to your sister, is integral. It's very, very important. Yeah, but it's, if without the, the, the stuff around it, gravy's nothing. It's nothing on its own. It's like this band. You call yourself Northern and you're not bothered about the gravy. Oh, well, I do love gravy. Gravy and chips. Oh, my God. <laughs> Trying to claw it back now. I haven't had that in ages. That's you probably curry have that on Christmas chips. Day. Probably would, with the curry. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. I Thanks, Mum and That was really... Oh, oh, and we used to go to Florida for Christmas as well. We're, we're quite weird around Christmas time. I don't know what, what's wrong with my family, but, yeah, we are quite strange. We went to um, Disneyland for Christmas, which was amazing. I'm not sure how I feel about all this. I feel like it should be cold and grey, and you should have the heating on full wax. No, you need to be stood next to Mickey Mouse with the curry. That's what it is. <laughs> That's where it's at. It's unusual, but I'm not <laughs> saying no if that was an invite. I would love you to pick your all-time favourite number one. That is a tricky one, I know. Would you like favourite number one? I need a list of a number dossier. ones. Yep, here's yes, a dossier of I'm number not... ones from the past ten years. Whoa, hang on a minute. <laughs> Do you want to have a thing? Do you remember that song? Now you're gone. That's so funny. What a great song. Sorry, this is a, this is so much fun to look over. Okay. The dossier. I love that you called it the dossier. That's <laughs> the dossier of number and I've ones. Got, and I've got a clip folder with me. What can I say? There's just so many to choose from. What a difficult question. Uh, if you want to sing, was any Robbie lines? Williams' Angels ever number one? I think it almost definitely was. Yeah, well, that's got to be mine, because that kind of set me up to start singing. Really? So you Screw heard... Screw the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you heard uh, Angels by Robbie Williams, and you thought, I want to do a bit of that. Well, I used to... That's what I used to have my go-to karaoke song. When I was little, my dad always used to get me up to sing karaoke, so you know I could sing, and I used to do it for my granddad as well, bless him. Um, yeah, so I, I sang a lot of that. I sang a lot of Oasis. Even though Oasis completely dissed us the other day in the press, but it's nice to dish your fans sometimes, isn't it? Um... <laughs> Yeah, no, I used to sing a lot of the ways. I used to put my arms behind my back on the microphone and stuff, which is quite fun. It's a strong look, that. It is a strong, strong look. And I got you got to love Oasis. They are great. I just wish sometimes they would uh, pep down. Be a bit nicer. Well, yeah, there's just no point. You, you ripped off half the industry for no reason and then loved Kanye West. I mean, I love Kanye West as much as the next man, but there's no need to diss poor old Adele. Politeness She's just saying hello. Me. She's, She's just, just saying, saying hello, hello on a, on a little phone. That's all she wanted to do was say hello on her phone. She probably was calling Noel Gallagher at the time, and he's just gone, you know what? And, and just it ripped a, her off. It was such a windy day as well. You feel it was sorry such for a windy, her. I know you do. Seriously, she doesn't. She was thinking it. about all the good times they had together, and now, you know, Noel, good old Noel, bless him. And do you know what the funny thing was? I met him the day the story was coming out, and I didn't know it was coming out. And he came up to me and went, "All right, mate, you doing?" I was like, "Yeah, fine, thanks, nice to meet you." Next day, read the story. I'm thinking, "You yeah, little, <laughs> how sad is that?" So I had to have a moan about that at some point, but I'm, I'm being nice about it. I but feel like can't. you're over it, though. No, well, I am over it, but I just I just think it's sad because that ge they genuinely, like, led me to a path of singing, which is something they should be very proud of, which I feel the same if I've ever made anybody else want to sing a song. Um, but then they don't... I don't think they think before they speak sometimes, and you never know who was a fan of your music, especially when you were as big as they were. 
And do it with grace. That's that seminal grace, time as well grace. when you're buying music for the first time or yeah, you're yeah, listening exactly. to music for the yeah, first yeah, yeah. time. So I'm, I'm sticking with old Robbie there and saying angels. What do you get for the boy who has everything, a.k.a. a boy in one direction? Because mm. it can't just be a toiletry selection, can it? cannot just be a toiletry selection. Um, I don't know, I think now I've got a bit older, it's more, I love giving presents on, like, Christmas is always nice, like, making my family smile, that's what I get in return for, you know, and my mum and my, mom and my sister always worry about what to buy me and whatever else, but, you know, it's, it's, um, yeah. I I'm not really, my mum used to ask me when I was little, though, exactly the same thing, what do you want for Christmas, and there was never anything I really needed, and I didn't want to make her go out of her way for something that I wouldn't really need, so I was always pretty much the same when I was a kid, I'm, I've always been pretty difficult to buy for, so I'm a saver. Oh, really? But then when it comes to other people, I'm a spender. I feel like when people say, it's just so nice to give presents, what they mean is, I just like to get cash. <laughs> I feel like that's what it's code for. Just give me some money. No, just I'm give just me a book kidding. token and I'll get what I want. Joe was great when you were little, when people used to get you vouchers for the wrong shop, and you're thinking, why did you not just put the 20 in the card and we could have dealt with that? But now I've got to go and spend this 20 somewhere. I used to sell them to me mum. My mum used to buy them off me, these, these vouchers that people used to buy. W.H. Smith's voucher. I don't read. <laughs> What are you doing? Loads of stationery, though. Yeah, well, that's everything a boy wants when they're little. So, uh, last song that you were probably obsessed with. Oh, we got up a bit of Hotline Bling, haven't we? Yeah. You used to call me, oh man. Yeah, because he did used to call me, and then I kind of lost his number, but. <laughs> and do you get addicted to something? Like, do you kind of then have to listen to it on loop? Yeah, but my, it was so funny. One of my friends in the car the other day was like, oh, we haven't heard Drake for a while. Because I literally, I get addicted to that. That kind of charges me up for the day. But it's hard to keep up with it, which album's which at the moment. Because they're all kind of. I don't know what's going on with it. There's just loads of music. It can't stop producing. You just can can't I? stop just <laughs> pumping out great songs. That's what it is. You used to call me on my. Hi, it's Nile here from One Direction, and we're in control of Radio One for the next hour. This is the Christmas One D Show. Get involved using the hashtag One D R One Xmas. This is the One Direction Christmas Show. One Direction on BBC Radio One. So it's Christmas Day today. Happy Christmas. Thanks, Alice. Happy Christmas. So I want to talk to you about your Christmas Day ritual because yeah. for um, everybody it's so different. So what happens? What time do you go to bed? Are you one of those ones that's like, the sooner I go to bed, the sooner I can get up? Is it really different, though? I think everyone does the same thing on Christmas Day. Go on, talk me through. Well, like, the night before, uh, I don't know about in England, but in Ireland the pubs are open until, like, 9 or 10 or something like that. So I go down for a few pints. Everyone, all my mates fly in from wherever they're living. Some of the lads live in Australia, some of them live in America, so everyone, it's like, a, it's like a sin not to go home for Christmas if you're Irish. So you go for a few pints and then everyone goes to bed. And then the next day you just wake up, do the same thing as everyone else in the world, open presents, sit around, eat yourself into a coma, and then just fall asleep at the couch at about 7 o'clock and then it was just a waste of a day. I think people are getting to that point now. I feel people are like <laughs> on that downward spiral. Start, start on, on you start on such a high, don't you? And then yeah. you're like, I feel absolutely <laughs> dreadful by three o'clock. <laughs> What does somebody buy for someone in One Direction? Because obviously you've got all the Benjamins. Oh, <laughs> what did you just say? All the Benjamins? All the Benjamins, oh yeah. Uh, I like uh, simple stuff like, I'm, I'm a man of a funky sock. Today, not so much, I guess. Oh, well, it's a funky stripe, a little Breton like, stripe. Uh, I do like a funky sock, so I like socks. I like getting socks for Christmas. You're That's, such a man. Yeah, yeah. Just get me socks. Well, I'll have a razor blade. <laughs> razor blades and Gillette and that. <laughs> <laughs> my mum bought me uh, last year. She bought me a coffee machine. Nice. You know the one where you pop the pods in. Yeah. yeah. She got me one of them, which that's is quite fancy. That's, that's a good one. Yeah. That's a really good present. I like that. So it's stuff like that. So stuff that I can use every day. Do you still get a selection box? Oh, you can't beat it, can you? Cavalry <laughs> selection box. Hanging out with it. Hanging out with a stocking. It's just. It's always good. And what do you leave till oh, last? Anything coconutty? I I love fudge. Fudge is always the last one. I always leave. <laughs> oh, you save the best till last. Yeah, fudge is the best one. Leave the best till last. How long is it before you get cabin fever at home? Because I'd say I'm like 48 hours and then I'm like... Oh, like when you go home? home. Yeah. Yeah, it's two days, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it just gets boring pretty quick. It's the same like when they come off tour or something like that. You just, you go home, you can't wait to get off tour towards the end. Because you can't wait to sleep in your own bed and stuff. And then you get home and you're like, all right, when are we going back? I'm bored already. <laughs> I also feel like, I don't know if this is your family, but... Why do parents have the heating on at, like, 180 degrees? It's like, <laughs> guys, it is so boiling in here. I actually sometimes, have to go stand like, in the garden. Sometimes at home, it's, like, one of two ends of the spectrum. It's either freezing or roasting. 100%. Yeah. My dad's on the thermostat, like, minus 10. <laughs> and my mum's like, crank it up. Let's feel like Florida. <laughs> I wondered if you have a favourite number one ever, I mean. And that's hard, so I've brought with me a dossier of number ones, if you'd okay. like to see it. I'd love to see it, please. It's quite an invitation. Does um, it? This is from the past 10 years. <laughs> Every number one for the past ten years. Yeah. 
Okay. Oh, I think we have a decision. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to say two of them because I can't make up my. That's not the rules, but okay, go on. All right, let's just pick one then. Jeez, no, you you're a hardcore. You I can didn't pick really. Two. You can pick two. Oh god, I didn't see that. You'd be useless at karaoke with that book. Yeah, I know. I know. I'll pick in a sec. They'll be like our hours up, love. Right. I'm gonna go Sex on Fire, King's Leon. Great shout. Because it's just every festival that I went to from 15 onwards was pretty much that. And it doesn't get old. Like you're never gonna. Never. Get tired. Still doing a karaoke now, actually. Alrighty then, Niall. Do you have an all-time favourite band? As difficult as that question is. All-time favourite band? Mm. Yeah, the Eagles. They're my. Now, a lot of people don't don't know that. So they're well, an older band do. that maybe um, a lot of listeners might not have heard of. Yeah. But also, I should say, Liam chose the Eagles. Liam chose the Eagles? As his favourite band. Did he? That is the most random thing I've ever heard. It's like he made that up on the spot. <laughs> I'd say he knows two Eagles songs. Hotel California and Desperado, like everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Are you livid about that? Yeah, I actually am. I can't believe that. Um, I know. Uh, yeah, they're just... I went to my first Eagles concert when I was like four. And I've been to see them about 12 times since. Liam said he was a bigger fan. Liar. <laughs> Um, I've definitely been to a few more gigs than him. Now, thinking uh, less about maybe old songs, more about stuff that's out at the moment, yeah. what was the last song that you were properly obsessed with? Ooh, good question. Um, I'm trying to think what's on the list now. Oh, you can't beat Adele at the minute. She's Hello. just I'm not the only one that's giving you this answer in the last three weeks, whatever it's been. That song is just insane. It gets in there, doesn't it? It does. It didn't even take time to grow. It just came in, smashed us all in the face. It was great. How do you feel about the flip phone, though? Very controversial. The flip phone? In the, oh, in the... Yeah, sorry about that. It's very funny. Some people are really yeah. angry about that. <laughs> Hello. This is Louis from One Direction, and we're in control of Radio 1 for the next hour. This is the Christmas 1D Show. Merry Christmas, everyone. You're listening to One Direction on BBC Radio 1. So, I need to talk to you about Christmas because it's um, Christmas Day today. That it is, yes. That it is. Happy Christmas. It was my birthday yesterday. Happy birthday and uh, many happy returns. Tell me, what would be the song that it wouldn't be Christmas without? Well, I'm going to have to say Mariah Carey, aren't I? Of course. I know everybody says that, but I'm going to have to. I'm, I'm over the moon that you've said that. Are you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I really good, am. Good, yeah. good, I Do appreciate that. little... Uh, Oh, no, <laughs> definitely not. I don't think I'm quite to the vocal standard of Mariah, but there we go. Um, is your house a house that has a Christmas compilation on, you know, while the cooking's happening? And Yeah, definitely. I mean, me, me mum normally takes control of that, so it's all cheesy, classic Christmas yeah, tunes. Yeah, has to be, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's got to be, it's got to be. I do appreciate you spending Christmas Day with me, by the way, which is usually quite a personal day, but... It, well, I think it's nice, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, just, it's been nice. People say it's about family, but I think it's about friends, too. Yeah, so. I'd, I'd like to think so, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh... I wanted to ask you um, your favourite number one ever. It's quite tricky, though. Hmm. That is tricky. Um, I'm, I'm going to go... It's not really my genre normally, but when I was growing... Around the time that we just started going out, uh, my age, I'm going to say Bonkers, Dizzy Rascal. Yes! Yeah, yeah. And do you still feel nostalgic when that comes on now? Yeah, definitely. I threw a house party at home, and I remember, like, it was, like, at the peak when that song came on, and, like, yeah, it always reminds me of the party. It's amazing, those songs that can transport you in time, where you're like, yes, I remember the first time I heard this and exactly where I was. Oh. This is the 1D Christmas show. If you want to get involved, it's hashtag 1DR1Xmas on Twitter. This is the One Direction Christmas show. Merry Christmas, everyone. One Direction on BBC Radio 1. Louis, can you tell me your all-time in the whole wide world ever favourite band? Um, That is hard. Well, growing up, probably Green Day, actually. Um... Yeah, I'd probably stick with Green Day. Yeah. Was that the first record you bought? Or was that the kind of the first band that you thought, oh, actually, I could imagine maybe being in a band? I remember I got this live DVD that they did the tour, Bullet in the Bible, in uh, Milton Keynes, I think it was shot. And, um, yeah, it was just, like, such a great show, and actually it was quite inspiring. So, yeah, I, I suppose that was one of the influences, definitely. I feel like Green Day were one of those bands as well when it was at that point in your life when you kind of felt like, they're talking just to me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. I think, I think I was around 14, 15, around the time so yeah perfect. amazing amazing so what um what track would it be from green day do you think that would sum up that time i don't know if any of them sum up the time and my favorite song probably um god that's hard i'm gonna say just because it's pretty crazy basket case is great do you have the time 
BBC Radio 1. Right, Harry, favourite right. band of all time? Mm. Tricky one. It is tricky. Um, I don't, I, it's one of them, I don't know if you can pick one. I'm going to make you. Oh, are you? Yeah. yeah. Okay, shortlist, I'd say, Fleetwood Mac. Great job. Um, the band. Um, Stones. Beatles. That, I mean, that's, that's a solid that's, list. Yeah, you I shouldn't feel bad about that list. list. Yeah. yeah, they're all pretty major. Yeah, I think, yeah. I, I suppose in all of that, is there an album that you return to time and time again? Yeah, I think probably Rumours. What, maybe what track? I know that's really tricky, but... Oh. Uh, You're just going to say eight, aren't you? <laughs> and expect me to know it. Yeah. <laughs> track three. <laughs> track three, um, I mean, it's probably Dreams, right? But I don't know. Maybe I'm a big Songbird fan, and when you listen to it and you kind of sing along to it, it's not one of those where you get bored of doing it because there's so many different kind of things on there. And I think you can hear a lot of modern songs that you can hear the influence yeah, of that album. Yeah, I think album, you can. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of, you know, when you think about what everyone is listening to now, there's a lot of you can kind of see where. People have been like, well, this is one of the greatest of all time, so we'll just do we'll that. Just do that. <laughs> but change the words a bit. <laughs> Which I think is a great paradigm. For yeah, an album. yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> why why try and You might get it? sued, but yeah. Potentially, yeah, you're yeah. right. Okay, so that's fave band almost that you've selected. Yeah. I'll, I'll let you have that. I would love you to pick your all time favourite number one. I'm going to pick um, Thinking Out Loud, Ed Sheeran. It's, very, it's a personal song for me. Um, I think a couple of Christmases ago, um, I actually bought Ed a guitar for Christmas, and uh, this was one of the first songs that he wrote on it. So it's one of my favourite Ed Sheeran songs. I yeah. want to ask about Christmas in the Styles House. Okay. Um, do you get festive? Are you a bit of a, a bit of a Scrooge? Which camp do you fall in? Um, I am not a Scrooge. <laughs> when I was younger, I used to be like the first one awake. Um, and now I'm the last one awake because I'll just sleep in. Do you that have was... chocolate for breakfast, which is obviously a trade no. for Christmas Day? No. No, that's not, no, not really. Oh, okay. That's all good. Why not? Do you have chocolate for breakfast? Has nobody ever bought you a selection box? I feel like I'm going to buy you your first selection box, Aaron. I feel like it's a little impersonal, a selection box. <laughs> Are you joking? It's so personal. No, I don't know it's if it is. It's one of each top chocolate Because bar. it is the ultimate like re-gift. That's well, pretty yeah. cheap to re-gift a selection box. I'm sorry. You're I, in one direction and you're re-gifting a selection box. I'm not a massive chocolate guy, so it's Clearly. a shame for it to go to waste. Not even a chocolate coin. No, I mean, they've given me some problems in the past. <laughs> Have you tried coins. to use them on the bus? <laughs> no. They're, di they're very difficult. You get, like, you're trying to get the thing off. Oh, now, I haven't done chocolate coins for a while, so I don't know. I can't speak. <laughs> I'm not educated enough on You've the subject right the now. You've rested the chocolate currency. I, I'm enough. on a chocolate coin sabbatical at the moment. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I'll um, let you know when I come back to it. That is completely your choice. More okay. on that breaking news as we have it. I basically would love you to pick your ultimate Christmas song. Okay. So I've now set you, you know, in that scene. The stars are loving their time. They're like, oh, that's weird. This is a re-gifted selection box, having a great old time. Mm -hmm. What song is playing? The ultimate Christmas song. I would say probably Pogues is the obvious one. It was crazy.